activities in political science classes by Drishti IAS. I am Dr. Ashwati. Students, in the last two classes, we have discussed about approaches to comparative political analysis. In this lecture, I will be dealing with new institutionalism, which is a very important approach from the perspective of UGC net examination. Why? It is because of the fact that institute, new institutionalism has its relations with that of institutionalist approach which was earlier like it, it received a very big setback in the wake of the rise of behavioral movement. Why institutionalism or we can say that uh, institutionalism that got so much of prominence in the 1930s and then after like we can say that and then after it got declined by the 1950s 60s period it was because there were many uh, like criticism like those who criticized the institutional approach because of the reason that it was highly descriptive it was not highly analytical it had parochial values, it only looked up to the values, not at the facts. It was highly descriptive that I have already mentioned. It had like, you know, it was highly speculative. It talked about what ought to be, what it is best. And they focused only on institutions, not on the political behavior or it was not society centered, but they only looked up to the institutions like institutions like the executive, legislature, judiciary, all these things were the focal points for the institutionalists. They only looked up to the formal institutions, but they did not look up to the, uh, the how it is going to affect the people. End of the day, the, in, why we have institutions? They are there for the service of the population, the people who are the members of the political community that we call it as citizens right so it was highly prescriptive normative uh, and many uh, thinkers like Royce Macridis he came up with the biggest criticism about the institutionalist or the traditionalist approach for being highly parochial normative speculative non-comparative tendencies and very important one was it had a euro it had the features of eurocentrism or it only looked up to the institutions of europe basically and they tried to create a kind of a mirror effect like okay if uh, institutions here in europe they can be applied or the models can be applied to elsewhere or to any other countries in the world so there was a demand that we have to look up to the uh, the beyond europe there was a need to look up to latin american asia uh, uh, like you know afro asian countries which were received uh, like you know independence from their colonial masters in the wake of the second uh, the after the end of the second world war now so here you can again see the behavioralism had explicit concern with the theory development and quantitative analysis because of this reason institutionalist approach actually received a big setback received criticism for being too descriptive and for limiting its theoretical exploration to formal rules of government they only looked up to the institutions and they had a eurocentric bias that i have already mentioned so the institutionalism lost its significance in the wake of behavioralism in 1950s and 1960s according to Hague et al a revival of institutionalism or we can say that the new institutionalism that emerged in the 1970s that goes beyond formal rules and looks at how institutions shape decisions and define interests here under new institutionalism there was a new thrust that we have, we should not, or the new institutionists behave, believe that they should not just look up to the institutions only, the formal rules and norms that define the institutions, but rather than that, they have to look up to the receiving end as well. So now you can just think like, why? If you remember the David Easton's theory of that systems analysis, it had this input functions and output functions. So, you can actually place the demand in the form of outputs or in the form of policies you receive through the output. And if there are issues with the output, whatever has been like, you know, whatever decisions or the policies have been made. So, it goes back to the feedback loop and then after again, it forms like a demand. Then it goes through the political process, then again you have the output. So, 
we can say that the neo institutionalism somehow took influence from behavioralist approach as well to the some extent that okay we now have to transform ourselves with the needs of the changing context it focuses on structures and organizations rather on individual behavior although it has taken inspiration from behavioralism in developing theory and analytical methods human behavior is highly shaped by the institutions this was one of the most important idea behind neo institutionalism that yes human behavior what's or what's or institutions you have it actually shapes the human behavior because these institutions are providing things right distribution of resources allocation of resources there are so many types of things that institutions are actually supposed to perform and in that way it actually uh, like you know shapes the human behavior so like in the 80s 90s period we have like many thinkers they came up with the ideas of weak state strong state fragile state why why you are looking up to the state it was because state is the institution that is there for providing with all the basic needs or for fulfilling your basic needs you need the state you cannot just say that you cannot minus state you need state because that is the authority that will be channelizing all your needs neo institutionalism insists on a more autonomous role for the political institutions so they are providing more autonomy so how these institutions have to behave in certain conditions like now we have like after uh, like tsunami hit the world like you know hit this indonesian all these areas in the early 21st century the first decade of the 21st century the people actually like the world actually uh, had a kind of an idea that we need to study about disaster management it got a new impetus similarly after covid 19 what we have seen is like now the countries are actually investing more on health care so this is what i understand here that new institutionalism insists on a more autonomous role for political institutions you have to change yourself with the changing circumstances neo institutionalism focused on how political life was developed around certain events symbols etc like there are certain culture values you have to respect them and you have you need to change yourself to certain events it is not just like you know you cannot just create certain norms at the institutional level and you just know you are not thinking about what will happen what sort of outcomes it is going to produce you have to think along with in that line as well it was not about mere understanding of decision making and allocation of resources it was not just about the input functions but also about the output functions you have to take a kind of an idea that how it is actually affecting the people now we have made a policy and for 100 people you have made a policy there is a high possibility that the 20 people among them are not going to be happy with the with that particular law or that decision so you have to make your decisions or your policies like more accommodative to the needs of each and every type of persons in the society right political action is best understood by reference to the contrast between the logic of appropriateness and logic of consequences so you have to look at both now the for the phrase neo institutionalism very important one students the phrase neo institutionalism was coined by james march and johann olsen in their seminal article which was published in 1984 the article's name is the neo institutionalism organizational factors in political life written by james g march and johann p olsen published in 1984 you can actually download it from uh, google also and this was published by the american political science review very important article students from the perspective of understanding neo institutionalism now there are like this book was also a very important one from the perspective that 
the book's title is Bringing the State Back In. This is an editor. Uh, this was edited by three writers, Peter Evans, Detrich, Rushemeo of Brown, the both of them belong to Brown University, Theda Scotchpole of Howard University, published in 1985, bringing the state back in. From the very, like, you know, you can buy this title itself, you can understand that they are emphasizing on the need that you need to, uh, like, you know, reinstate the significance of state in political analysis why it is because state as an institution has a major role to play you can have behavioralism that is right okay you have to understand that behavior of the individuals with reference to certain political conditions but at the same time you have to give more emphasis upon the state right it is a very important institution from the perspective of political analysis Guy B. Peters, very important thinker from the perspective of uh, neo-institutionalism, uh, he has published this work called 1999, he published this work, Institutional Theory in Political Science, the Neo-Institutionalism. He spoke about these varieties of neo-institutionalist theory, normative institutionalism, rational choice approaches, historical institutionalism, social institutionalism, structural institutionalism. Okay, so these, uh, like, you know, he has given these varieties of neo-institutionalism in his work. So, you can actually, uh, like, read them if you want, if you want to have more information about it and also from the perspective of, like, if you are more interested in doing some research also, you can read this, uh, uh, this work by Guy, B. Guy Peters, basically, published in 1999. And uh, he has also written another article in a book that is the title of the article is political institutions old and new so you will get a kind of an idea that how from old institutionalism it made a transition to new institutionalism what are its important aspects so you can actually read a guy like big guy peter's work as well but this is a very important work institutional theory in political science the new institutionalism published in 1999 and there is a high possibility that in UGC net examination, they may ask you to identify the schools of thought as well. Like among these, among the following, who, is, who belongs to the new institutionalist aspect. So you have uh, Peter's name is there, then after March and Olsen, many other thinkers are there. Okay. So varieties of new institutionalist theory, it also had this idea of normative institutionalism, rational choice approaches, historical institutionalism, Social institutionalism and structural institutionalism. Then after we have an another important thinker called uh, Vivian Lowndes and Mark Roberts. They published a work in 2013 and that work's name is Why Institutions Matter. Very important work and the new institutionalism in political science. The title of the book is Why institutions matter the new institutionalism in political science they have made in the chapter they have made uh, they have talked about three phases of uh, institutionalism so the first phase is from uh, the phase one exploration and rediscovery the period is actually like roughly we can say from 1930s to 1970s then after we have the second phase of institutionalism which is, they have given a title divergence and division from 1980s to that of late 1990s then after phase 3 which we can say that the contemporary phase convergence and consolidation that has emerged in the 21st century so uh, Vivian Lundis and this Roberts they have tried to portray that institutionalism has tried itself to change in accordance with the changing circumstances and changing context so you can see that they are highly institutionalist and to the extent that they have tried to portray that institutionalism was there it did not uh, they did not face any sort of decay or decline but rather it was there but in a kind of it was trying to change itself to the changing circumstances and they have also identified different strands of near like institutionalism that you can understand 
that I will be explaining in the next slide. But yes, uh, Vivian Launders as well as Mark Roberts for them old approach studied how individual organizations were institutionalized. The new approach locates the process of institutionalization. So, according to them, old institutionalism actually looked up how the organizations were institutionalized. Okay, so it was like a top-down approach, but the new institutionalism is more of a bottom-up approach, we can say, because it looks up to the process of institutionalization, like how certain organizations gets institutionalized. At the same time, they also look up to the idea that how human behaviors are also changed or like we can say that how human behaviors are also shaped by the political institutions. Different strands of new institutionalism, normative institutionalists are there, rational choice institutionalists are there, historical institutionalists are there, empirical institutionalists, international inst institutionalists, sociological, network institutionalists, constructivist or discursive institutionalism, feminist institutionalism. By this, Vivian Launders and Mark Roberts tried to locate institutionalism in every other aspect of theories, like, you know, whether it is constructivism, whether it is feminism, whether it is historical, those who actually prescribe for the historical approach, those who prescribe for the rational approach, in every aspect they have tried to find institutionalism, okay? So, this is one of the most important and significant work. Here, this is a question asked in UGC net examination. The fundamental difference between institutionalism and neo-institutionalism would primarily be located on the principle of what? Deduction, induction, experimentation, investigation. It is experimentation. Because institutionalism was highly descriptive it was not analytical it did not look up to the like uh, their comparison was just limited to the institutions but it was more descriptive they had a kind of a parochial tendency they were highly traditional in that respect as well as they had a eurocentric bias and uh, and they did not look up for the experimentation because neo institutionalism was highly influenced by the behavioral revolution because of that they try to bring both facts and values in their institutionalist approach so that is the reason why c is the answer next which of the following characterizes rational choice institutionalism as a new institutional approach in comparative politics a. It explains interest-based motivations of political actors. It's true. It explains resolution of collective action dilemma. Yes. It explains cultural construction of interest and institutions. Uh, not much. It follows a deductive approach. Correct. So, your answer is B, A, B, D. So, students. Uh, this is all about the new institutionalist approach and there is a very important announcement to make our new batch for UGC net paper 1 and paper, no, paper 2 are starting from 10th of July. So, students who are actually preparing for UGC net examination, they can actually check out this course, they can join this course for, for a better kind of a preparation for UGC net examination. And students, uh, for all the information, additional information, you can check out the links given in the description box. So, students, thank you for watching my video. See you in another lecture. Bye.